my people, how are you doing? I hope you're a damn good day. Welcome back to the channel. And today we will be talking about Julian Lopetegui's 4-4-2 Wolverhampton Wanderers set of tactics information, of course. Um, so we are talking about the 4-4-2 and it was requested by Jack in the comments right here. Um, thank you, Jack. I have tried and I will try my best to replicate and recreate the 4-4-2 formation that you see on your TV screen whenever you watch Wolves. So basically, my, my basic knowledge before we hop into this is Julian Lopetegui, wherever he's gone, he's more or less played a 4-3-3 formation, right? And this formation, just looking at the tactics and everything, it does kind of mimic a 4-3-3. Like you'll see the way Nunes tucks in, Sarabia gets forward, Jimenez drifts wide, Kuna comes in from time to time. So you'll, you'll see like it more or less will create a 4-3-3, which I, I very much like. I'm a big fan of having a formation that kind of alters during gameplay and it creates another formation. So. I've tried my best to, to try and do that. So, you know, bear with me, you know, let me know down below if you appreciate it. Um, smash a like, subscribe if you're on you, that would be great. But going through the team, of course, we've got Raul Jimenez, we've got Kuna, we've got Sarabia, Lamina, Gomez, Nunez, Bueno, who's become a fan favorite, uh, Lopetegui favorite, came, came up from the, the academy, the under 21s. Um, he's kind of displaced Itanori, which is, you know, it's a, it's a big step because I, I rate Itanori quite a bit. Um, anyway, we've got, we've got Kilman who is linked with the Napoli move, which is kind of mad. We've got Dawson, Semedo, and then of course Jose Saar. We've got a man who tore his ACL, I think it was on his debut, which is quite sad. But we've got Kaladzic, um, Neto, Podence, Traore, Bentley, Doherty, who's just come back into the team. I think they signed him on a free, which is quite nice. It's nice to see him back. Um, and of course, we've got Gomez. Um, in the reserves, we've got some good players here. We do have some good quality players, but it's not, not that many. Um, but we've got Quang Hee Chan, we've got Johnny, Aiton Nori, we've got Jaquinho, um, and then a few others I'm, I don't care to mention. So just looking at the squad though, I know that um, Wolves are heavily hit with financial fair play. They, I think they're being investigated, I'm not exactly sure. But losing the likes of a, a Ruben Neves, losing the likes of a Collins to, to who was it, to Brentford, I think for like 28 million. Um, those are some key players for, from last season that helped Wolves a lot. So it's going to be very interesting to see what they can do, what they can't do going forward. Signing players, I mean, Doherty, in my opinion, is great cover for Semedo. Knows the club as well. Um, but I would seriously, seriously suggest that they need to sign uh, a better quality midfielder to come in and maybe displace a Gomez or displace a Lamina because they're decent, but they're rotational pieces. I mean, Gomez has good potential. He's like 21 or so, but Lamina mm, could definitely improve there if you ask me. But anyway, enough said. We'll have to see how things pan out for them. But talking about formations, it's just the basic 4-4-2 formation. There's no alterations or anything that's been made, um, as you can see right there. Now, as for the tactics, um, Wolves kind of play with like a, a, a mid block you could say not a low block it's a mid block um they, they're not going to overly press or you know make sure that you you're being constantly harassed or they're not going to just drop that that's why i've said it's to balance because they will maintain their formation they will maintain their structure but they're not going to you know overly exert themselves defensively they're just going to be smart with it and make sure that there's no easy passes there's no gaps there nobody's being pulled out of position they're just going to do their thing make sure that they're structurally sound and that's more or less what helped them quite a bit. I mean, talking about defense, their, their defense has never really been the issue. It's more or less always been the attacking outlet that they've failed to produce. I mean, I think since Jota has left, they've really struggled in front of goal. Um, the likes of Jimenez, um, Diego Costa last season, Kuna, I think he's done a fairly decent job since coming in. I rate him a fair amount, to be honest. Um, but it seems like their strikers have always just struggled and it's also been the the production value in that final third so the the 4-4-2 it's also to help them you know try and help overload the opposition um defense you know you want them to to score as many goals as possible so how do you do that you stack the box how do you do that you play a 4-4-2 two wingers two strikers you immediately improve in your odds which is also another reason why I think Lopetegui's gone with this formation, opposed to a 4-3-3. Um, but enough about that, let's talk about the defense. Um, 
As for the width, it's set to 50, just really basic, and the depth is set to 45. Like I say, it's more or less like a mid block that they play. They don't play an overly like low block, so it's a mid block. Um, offensive build up is set to slow build up and possession based football. Now, last season, Neves, Moutinho, who's another player that has left, um, but Neves, Moutinho, and Nunes in the midfield, they maintained the ball very well. They had quite a bit of possession. But they, like I said earlier, they just didn't know how to use that position in the final third. The final ball was always the stinker of the team. And it, it left the, their strikers high and dry from time to time. So they do play a possession-based brand of football. But it's about, you know, executing that little thing, you know, that little third final pass, you know. Um, as for the width, it's set to 70. So you want your players hugging the touchline, spreading out, pulling the opposition's defense out of position. You want your fullbacks bombing forward. Most of the width in this team is going to come from your fullbacks. They are very, very important. You want to stretch your opposition's defense. Um, and you do that by, by having a, a very wide team going forward. Um, as for players in the box, I have it set to 7. You can have it set to 6. It's a slightly more realistic approach having it set to 6. Like I say, they play a mid-block. They don't overcommit too many players. Um, they'd rather, you know, make sure that they, they have the ball and have a few players behind them opposed to being counter-attacked and potentially like conceding a goal um, but for the gameplay above I went with this form, like, set of instructions so it was set to seven um, I tried to overload the box as much as possible to try and score a goal um, create a chance you know just get them more active um, in the final third of play um, as for corners and free kicks it's set to four each standard procedures of course always um, so let's hop into the instructions really fast um, looking at Jose Saar of course, he's not a sweeper keeper. They're not playing a very low block or they're not playing a very high line. They're playing a mid block. So you don't need him to be a sweeper keeper. He just needs to come for crosses, command his box, make sure nothing beats him in the air. And I think you'll be fine with that. Um, as for your two center backs, again, more times than not, I don't mess with them. Because, um, yeah, it needs to be pulling out your hair and stuff. Um, so they're just set to their basic set of instructions. As for your full backs, however, they are set to the same instructions. But... The only difference is that, uh, well, they're, they're just set to join the attack. Um, as you can see here, set to join the attack, normal interceptions, mixed attack, and then you want him to stick to his position. You don't want them to step up and step out of position because um, there is always that risk factor involved. Um, but yes, so you, like I said earlier, you want them bombing on forward, bombing on past your your uh, wingers that are slightly in front of them, and you want them to be the, the, the guys firing crosses into the box creating opportunities and chances for the likes of Kuna, Jimenez, Potentia, Sarabia, or Nunez, um, who will be in and around the box um, at every, any given moment in time. So, like I say, the 4-4-2 formation here is set to try and create as many chances as possible going forward, because the more chances you create, you're going to at least score one of them, or you hope at least. Um, so yes, that is your fullback instructions. Now, as for your midfield instructions, it's not exactly symmetrical in this aspect. So Gomez is the, the Ruben Neves role. That's more or less the role that I've given Gomez here. Um, and what I, what I picture is that this midfield kind of shifts slightly. So from time to time, Nunez will tuck in and be more or less the, the left central midfielder with Gomez being the, the deepest midfielder, more or less the DM. And then Lamina being the, the right-sided midfielder with Sarabia, Jimenez, and Kuna more or less shifting. This is why I said earlier, it more or less shifts into like a, a 4-3-3 but it's got the structural integrity of a 4-4-2, which I love so, so much. Um, but this is more or less the Jimenez role, um, if you have the, the basic, like, no transfers in and out team. Um, so Gomez is set to stay back while attacking, balance on crossing runs, uh, normal interceptions, and then stick to position and cover center. So he's going to shield your, your back four. Um, he will help with Bueno get like bombs on forward or Semedo bombs on forward. He'll try and, you know, make sure that he fills in that position. But of course, he also has Lamina to help him with that. Now he has a bit more free range. Um, he can get forward, but more or less what happens with this formation is like there's a little block that gets created because your fullbacks are more attacking. Um, Gomez, Lamina, Kilman, and Dawson create like a little square, and then Gomez will protect the left hand side. Lamina will take the, protect the right hand side. They'll fill in for the fullbacks going when the fullbacks bomb on forward. Um, and it's kind of very similar to how Jurgen Klopp and Liverpool played a few seasons ago. I think when they may have won the league, it was more or less like, you know, Henderson and Fabinho 
creates like a little shield in front of Van Dyke and Matip. And either or would fill in for either or fullback um, when they bombed on forward. So it's, it's a very similar role to that, um, from my understanding at least. But um, as for Lamina, he is said to balance attack, um, stay on the edge of the box. Of course, you want him to collect the ball, recycle possession, um, make sure that he can potentially get off a shot, make sure that he can potentially work in the, the half spaces that are created for him or create an opportunity for somebody else. Um, he's also said to drift wide and then cover the wing. So he will more or less cover Sarabia because Sarabia will have more license to get forward. So he will be more defensive coverage for him as well as Semedo, whereas Gomez will be more defensive coverage like in front of the back four. Um, so slightly differing um, alterations to the, the two midfielders, but I think it works out quite well. Um, and speaking of Sarabia, moving on to him, his defensive or his set of instructions, defensive support is set to basic, um, chance creation set to balanced width, um, support run set to get him behind, so you want him pulling the, the opposition out of position, stretching the defense, um, and then of course he's set to get into the box and normal interceptions. So he, he is quite pacey, and one thing I will say is you need to play with inverted wingers for this um, set of instructions because you have bombing on fullbacks, so you have more natural crosses, right? Um, and then you also want to try and score as many goals as possible, and the best way to do that is to have people cutting in on their natural foot and getting off shots because of course it's more accurate. Um, so Sarabia and Nunez are both inverted wingers in this um, set of instructions. You can change it a little bit and maybe play Sarabia on the left but then it does change the dynamic of the team of course. Um, so yes that is Sarabia's set of instructions. Moving on to Nunez. Now like I said earlier he more or less shifts into the midfield from time to time and in order for him to do that uh, you have him set to basic defensive support, cut inside, come short. So you want him more or less involved in the build-up play, ball to feet, moving up, moving on. But he will be your, your highest midfielder. I know he starts as a left winger or a left midfielder, but he will more or less play as a, a, a central attacking midfielder from time to time. Um, he won't always be out wide. He'll come inside fair amount, make sure that Bueno has got loads of space to operate in um, because he is pulling... The opposition's fullback out of position um, and then of course he's said to stay on the edge of the box him Lamina and Sarabia will be in and around the box making sure that the tempo of the pace of play is controlled by them in and around the box you'll be looking for these guys to create that final third ball um, as well as Kuna to be fair and and to try and score goals um, but yes as for Raul Jimenez, of course, coming off of a hectic head injury like a few seasons ago, hasn't been the same player, it's quite sad to be honest. Um, but more or less talking about him, um, he is set to drift wide, get him behind, and basic defensive support is set to default. So you, you want him, like, I, I saw a, a, a chart of Julian Lopetegui's like, average positioning for players, and the striker always seemed to drift left um, and more or less pull the opposition out. Um, especially the centre-backs and I think that this set of instructions does a really good job of that and when I was looking at the gameplay earlier it really did replicate what uh, a, a, like a Huang He Chan can do or a Jimenez or maybe not a Kaleidosic but I think it's a different profile of player but in terms of Jimenez I think this does a really good job of getting the best out of him allowing him to operate in a bit more space he does have a fairly decent amount of pace on him of course um, so yes, it works out quite well. And then finally, the final player is Cunia, who was bought for £50 million. Madness, absolute madness. Um, he is set to drift wide, and he's also set to become a false nine. So he will also drop into midfield from time to time, pick up the ball deep, make driving runs. I think I made quite a few of those in the gameplay above. Um, but he is a very good player at just dropping deep, collecting the ball, spraying it out wide, potentially finding another pass. And I think Wolves offensively just improved a lot once he was in the team. And uh, he was very much a mainstay in the team um, once Lopetegui had brought him in. So he, he, I think he's a very good player, to be honest. Um, his interceptions are set to normal, and then defensive support is set to come back on defense. So he will more or less drop in just behind Jimenez and, and make runs off of Jimenez um, because he will be starting at a, at a lower point in the, in the on the field. So yes, that is the, the Julian Lopetegui 4-4-2 formation. I hope you've enjoyed these set of tactics. Smash the like button, subscribe if you are new to the channel. Um, but I really did enjoy using them, so I hope you guys do too.